welcome back to the class children in today's class we are going to discuss about the concept of mono hybrid cross first of all let us see what is the meaning for the term hybrid hybrid refers to the product which is obtained by the combination of two different substances right and this is the general definition right? when two different substances were combined and if you get a product a new product which is the combination of two different substances that the product is said to be a hybrid for example if you eat a, a dosa a normal dosa there is nothing special but if some potato stuff is kept in between the dosa and now what the product we got is masala dosa now masala dosa is a hybrid which is formed by the combination of normal dosa stuffed with potato so this is can be uh, considered as an example for a hybrid regarding plant hybridization a hybrid is a plant which is formed by crossing two genetically different plants right when two genetically different plants are crossed and the product what we get is what we call it as a hybrid the term mono refers to single so mono hybrid is the term used to define a hybrid which is formed or developed considering only one character let us see the definition for mono hybrid cross mono hybrid cross is a cross between two genetically different plants of a species where the inheritance of only one triad is considered look at the definition so it is a cross where two genetically different plants of a species so only one species in which two different plants genetically different plants were crossed but both the plants belongs to same species so in such a cross if only one character is considered then the cross is said to be a mono hybrid cross if the same cross is performed by considering two characters then it is said to be a di hybrid cross if three characters are considered then it is said to be a tri hybrid cross like that it goes on so mono hybrid cross is a cross between two genetically different plants of a species where the inheritance of only one triad so this has to be kept in mind so always in mono hybrid cross any one character is considered that alone is studied so that is why it is called as mono hybrid cross and moreover it involves the inheritance of single gene having two alleles you know what in mono hybrid cross we are discussing about one day one character so each and every character is controlled by a gene so one character is controlled by one gene and that one gene we have already discussed each gene has different versions a minimum of two versions and those versions are called as alleles so one character is controlled by one gene and one gene has a minimum of two alleles so in mono hybrid cross we study about one character so we are obviously studying about one gene and we are obviously studying about two alleles so always in mono hybrid cross it we study the inheritance of single gene involving two alleles right now before entering into the explanation for the chart let us discuss uh, uh, how the alleles are separated during the gamete formation so if we understand this concept then it will be easy for studying the chart right so let us enter into the concept see this is a cell right so this is a cell diploid cell why it is a diploid cell because it has a chromosome from father and the same chromosome from mother so now it is said to be a diploid so this chromosome has a gene and this chromosome has the same gene both the genes are respond sorry the same gene are with two alleles right so this gene is responsible for the seed shape but the alleles are different here the allele is dominant capital r is given 
whereas this allele is recessive. So this gene is responsible for seed shape, right? And the gene has two allelic forms. So here, since it is a heterozygous, we have both dominant allele as well as recessive allele. So this diploid cell during the gamete formation, right? Let us imagine this diploid cell undergoes the gamete formation, right? This is a germinal cell. Imagine this is a germinal cell. So if this is a germinal cell, this has to undergo meiosis to produce the gametes. Now, before entering into the meiosis, now this chromosome, the diploid chromosome get doubled. So as a result of doubling of chromosome, that is a replication, it duplicates, right? Chromosomes replicate or duplicate and produces the exact copy of the alleles, right? So now here, if you see only one uh, copy is present, right? In both paternal as well as maternal chromosome. Now here, after the replication process, the alleles are doubled, right? So after this, after the replication of the chromosome, meiosis will take place. So meiosis 1, the chromosome gets separated and after the meiosis 2, so finally four gametes are formed. We already know in meiosis, one germinal cell, if it undergoes meiosis, produces four daughter cells. But if you look at the daughter cells, each daughter cell has received only one allele. Any one allele is present in each daughter cell. For example, if you see this gamete, this gamete has only one allele that is recessive allele. If you see this gamete, this gamete also having only one allele, recessive allele. If you look at this gamete, this gamete also has only one allele, dominant allele. Likewise, that gamete also. So, we have four gametes, all the gametes having only one copy of the allele. Right? So, this is a basic rule. Right? So, during the gamete formation, all the gametes will receive only one allele of a gene. Right? Not both the alleles will be present in a gamete. So, this gamete contains only a recessive allele. Right? No, not both the dominant and recessive allele both are present in the same gamete. If it, if it is present, so then it is an abnormal one. Right? So now we are discussing about the normal condition. So always in a normal condition, after the meiosis, each gamete will receive only one allele of a gene. So this is the basic rule and this is what we call it as principle of segregation. So this we can uh, uh, discuss uh, much better in the next video. Right? So one thing we have to keep in mind is, so during gamete formation, only one allele will enter into the gamete. Right? So that we have to keep in our mind. So now let us enter into the explanation for chart. Right? So now let us see the how the Mendel performed his monohybrid cross. Right? So we know Mendel, he is the father of genetics. So he performed this experiment in Pisum sativum plant. Pea plant, garden pea plant, he selected seven different characters, contrasting characters. For monohybrid cross, he selected the plant height or the stem height, right? So, in monohybrid cross, Mendel selected the height of the plant. So, only one character, stem height alone is considered, right? So, now this is the tall plant having a uh, very large structure, right? So, tall plant and this is a dwarf plant. So, both are same species, Pisum sativum, right? This is a Pisum sativum plant and this is also a Pisum sativum plant. Similar plants, but genetically they are different because this is pure breeding tall, whereas this is pure breeding dwarf. So, this is a tall plant and this is a dwarf plant, genetically different, but same species, both are Pisum sativum, right? So, this tall plant is denoted by the uh, form or gene form capital T's, right? Why it is denoted as capital T? We have already discussed the dominant, uh, the dominant alleles will be, uh, will be denoted in the capital letter or uppercase letters, whereas the recessive one is denoted as the lowercase letters, right? So likewise here also, since tall is the dominant, it is denoted as capital T. Since a gene has two alleles, here it is a pure breeding, so it is both the alleles are dominant. So here also a dwarf plant, a pure breeding dwarf plant, so both the alleles are recessive alleles, right? So this is a pure breeding tall plant denoted by the alphabets, capital T, capital T. And here is the pure breeding recessive gene, recessive plant having the recessive alleles, small t and 
small t. Now, this plant during the gamete formation, it produces gametes. Here, here we have two alleles. So, it has to produce four gametes, right? So, now if this uh, diploid cell produces the gametes, all the four gametes are going to be same in the nature. So, to avoid the confusion, only one gamete is uh, given here, right? So, it, uh, the same way, so four different gametes, four capital T's will be produced, right? So, to avoid the confusion, only one capital T is denoted as the gamete. So, likewise here also, so we produce, so this recessive plant produces four small t's as the gametes, but here only one is given. Now, when these gametes, right, see only one allele is received. Here also only one allele is received. So, after the gamete formation, the gametes will fuse and what the product obtained is tall plant. The result is a tall plant. The F1 hybrid is a tall plant. This is the hybrid and this hybrid is a tall plant. So, this result was really a surprising result for Mendel. Why? Because Mendel crossed the tall plant with that of the dwarf plant and what he expected, logically what he expected is, uh, he, he expected a medium height plant but what he got is a tall plant. So, Mendel was really astonished to uh, see such a result, right? So, now what he had done, Mendel has self-crossed the F1 hybrid. See, look at this. So, this is an F1 hybrid and this is also an F1 hybrid, right? So, both the F1 hybrids. But look at the genotype. So, this is also tall, the parental variety. This is also a tall, the F1 hybrid. But look at the genotype. This is a pure breeding. Both the alleles are same, right? Pure breeding tall. Whereas, this is a heterozygous tall, right? Hybrid tall, hybrid tall. So, this F1 hybrid is selfed with the another F1 hybrid. So, as a result, during the gamete formation, two different types of gametes will be produced because we know as per the principle of segregation, one gamete will receive one allelic form. So, it produces one gamete with capital T, another gamete with small t, likewise here also. So, two different gametes are produced and when these gametes were combined, right, so we get a two groups of plants. One group of plant is totally tall and also in the F2 generation we received the dwarf plant. So Mendel was surprised to see the tall, sorry, to see the dwarf plant in the second generation. Why? Because what he thought is in the F1 generation there is no dwarf plant. All the plants are tall but in the second generation he obtained the dwarf plant in certain ratio, right? So, out of 4%, 1%, right? One fourth of the plants what he obtained in F2 generation is dwarf. The remaining three fourths is tall. So, what Mendel suggested, the gamete or the allele for the dwarf plant is present in the F1 generation, but it is not expressed. Only the allele for the tall plant is expressed, right? So, based on this only, he proposed the law of dominance. So, law of dominance is the was the first law of Mendel, right? So, uh, the law of dominance we shall uh, discuss in the next class, right? So, he, he proposed that uh, the allele for the recessive plant is present in the F1 generation, but it is not expressed. Why it is not expressed? Because of the presence of the dominant allele, the recessive allele cannot able to express its phenotype, right? So, in the F2 generation, he obtained the tall and the dwarf plants in the ratio of 3 is to 1. So, 3, 3, or 3 fourth of the plants what he observed is tall plant and 1 fourth of the plant what he observed is dwarf plant. So, the accurate ratio what he obtained is 787 out of 1064 F2 plants were tall and 277 of 1064 plants in the F2 were dwarf. That comes out as the ratio of 3 is, 3 is to 1. So, this is the phenotypic ratio. What we uh, observe externally is what we call it as phenotypic ratio. So, the phenotypic ratio of uh, the monohybrid cross is 3 is to 1. So, 3 folds of tall and 1 fold of dwarf. 
but if you look at the genotypic ratio look at the actual genotypic ratio while deriving the punnett square punnett square is a special form of uh, mathematical calculation to identify the probability of genes all right so in while working in the punnett square we can able to see the possible genotypes so where one fold of tall plant is homozygous tall two fold of tall plant is heterozygous tall and one fold of dwarf plant is homozygous dwarf that makes up the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1 right so one fold of homozygous tall two folds of heterozygous tall and one fold of homozygous dwarf and this is the genotypic ratio that is the genetic makeup so the genotypic ratio of mono hybrid crosses 1 is to 2 is to 1 whereas the phenotypic ratio of mono hybrid crosses are 3 is to 1 so this is what we call it as mono hybrid cross if you look at this entire cross uh, only one character is considered that is the stem height alone is considered even though the plant has different types of characters uh, right so both the plants differ in their flower color both the plants differ in their fruit shape uh, both the plants differ in the seed shape seed color there are a lot of differences but mendel considered only one character at this time so that is why it is called as a mono hybrid cross and this is what we call it as a punnett square or checkerboard he is a uh, reginald punnett right so he is a british geneticist he developed this uh, punnett square technique and this punnett square technique is a square diagram which helps to calculate the possible genotypes probability of possible genotypes of offspring in a genetic cross while performing the genetic crosses uh, we can uh, just uh, apply the gametes right in opposite uh, boxes and we can able to identify the possible genotypes right so this is what we call it as a punnett square c so at one frame it is uh, given as male and the male gametes are uh, introduced and another frame the female gametes are introduced and the possibility so this t is crossed with this one and producing the homozygous tall and likewise here also these two are crossed producing the heterozygous tall here heterozygous tall and homozygous Dwarf, right so this is how the punnett square works right yes children in today's class we have discussed about the mono hybrid cross and these can be the possible questions so define mono hybrid cross what is the genotype and phenotypic ratio of mono hybrid cross this can be asked as either two mark or three mark explain mono hybrid crosses in detail this can be asked as a five mark question right so hope this session will be a useful one. Let us meet in the next episode.